Welcome. To augment our study of the history of English, I figured I'd share with you all some examples of old English poetry. So this poem that we're going to look at today is called The Dream of the Rude. It's a religious poem probably from around originating at about 600 AD. So fairly old and it combines elements of Christianity with some of the older Germanic pagan traditions. Um, and it's a really interesting poem. I studied it a lot in graduate school and it was part of one of the reasons I did a lot of work in Old English was to read and to study this poem a little better. So as I read, I want you guys to kind of focus on some of this text over here. We have the original Old English version next to um, a, a kind of word-for-word -word translation. But one of the things I really want you all to focus on is just kind of listen to how it sounds, see what you can pick out, and what kind of cognates you can recognize. Here we can see that there's a lot of different things going on with Old English. We've got some different characters that we don't see in modern English or even in some examples of Middle English. So kind of try and pick up on some of those things and just try and get a sense for it and to see what, what, what you can pick out. There should be some religious imagery that you can think about and think about how things sound and what some possible cognates would be in modern English. So here we go. Um, we'll call this the dream of the root or also your instructor making an ass of himself. Wait, ich swef nasist seik an viele. Hweit ye mei hemete tu midre nichte, sit in reod baran reste wunden, thut mithet ich ye sal silege trea, on lift laden leot be wunden, be ema be ortost, all that bacon vas be gotten mit gold, gimos studen, fere et folde sechtem, swileke fair fife wear on hop on thumb haxel spana. Behold and there, angel drich denis, el ferge ther, forth geskeft. Ne was there heru fracude skelga, a kind there beholden haligastas. Men offer molden in all this mer geskeft, silica was se sigabim. Ich sinum fa for wounden mit womum. Ye sol ik woodres treau, wedum weuro thod. Winnem skinnen, ye hear it mit gold, gimos haften be ringen we earthjosh, well done this treau. So here we can see for an example, not a lot of that is intelligible, um, if, especially if you haven't studied it. Uh, it should sound a lot like German. Um, because actually Old English and still a lot of modern English syntax is, is more similar to German than it is to any other any other language out there. But here we should be able to pick on some things. Uh, this, this character right here, for example, and we can look at when we talk about form and structure class words. Uh, so form words have changed the most drastically from Old English where a lot of the structure class words have remained the same. So here we example, all that bacon was begotten mit gold. So really what we have here is all that beacon was begotten or covered with gold. So we can see here that there's still a lot of similarities. This one has an extra character um, uh, that, that is the, the TH, but, but it literally is a translation for that. All that bake beacon was, and again we can see there, you know, that is almost a pretty pretty good translation for our current verb was. You can see that there there's just a different a different spelling because they have that that diagraph character. Um, so a lot of these things are similar and again we can see down here that we should also see some content words that are similar. Holigastas, holy ghosts, angel, angel, um, midre nikte, midnight, so a lot of similarities, but also a lot of differences. And one of the things that's important to rec remember about Old English compared to Middle English, which we'll look at in a second, or Modern English, is that this doesn't necessarily have the, the type of syntactical consistency that Modern English does. This, a lot of the words were strung together and there, were, there was more morphological information that was carried on some of the nouns that would tell you how it was functioning in a sentence. So there was no subject, verb, object, order in Old English and it was just kind of however the composer wanted to, 
wanted to do those two things. So now let's go take a look at an example of a Middle English poem. Okay, so now let's take a, an ex a look at an example of Middle English. So this is probably a poem. This poem is called The Owl and the Nightingale, and it's pretty much contemporary with, with Chaucer, so somewhere within, you know, the 1300s, 1400s this was written. It's actually anonymous, no one knows who wrote it, but it's a really good poem. It's interesting. It talks about a debate that two birds, an owl and a nightingale, are having. So kind of, again, what I want you all to listen for is to just kind of listen for some content words that sound similar to what they do in modern English. And the other thing that you should also start to hear is this should be a little more intelligible to you than the old English example was. Um, I shouldn't need a translation here. You should get most of it based on what I'm going to read. Again, there's still some, some different characters in here, but... All in all, it's much more similar to modern English, and I think you guys should get a good sense of the the poem. So here we go. Ich was in one summer dal, in one sooth a diesel hal. Ich heard hold a great tale, an hul an one nicht an gal. That plate was stiff and stark and strong, some while soft and lewd among. In other ace and author's fall, and let that vool maud at all. At either side of author's custe, that alla wuste, that he wuste, on her and her of author's song, he hold a plaiding sooth a strong. The nicht and gal begone to speech, in one herne of one breach, and sat up on very bow, there where a boot blossom and ow, in or waste a thick hedge, a mean they mid spire and green sedge. Ho oh, was the glatter oot they rise, in song all le cune wise. Bet thut the dream that he were of harp and pipe, than he ne'er. That thut that he were his shot, of harp and pipe, than of throat. So for example, you know, there, there are a couple in here that, that just need no translation. I mean, if, we, if you read them aloud, reading them off the page, they seem a little bit different. But once you kind of understand uh, the phonological system of Middle English and can read this stuff out loud, it sounds pretty similar. So, for example, we'll look at this one. Uh, the Nichthan Gald become the speech in one herne of one breach. So here, example, as I said before, you know, the, we have this character for TH and then E. So that, that the has been a part of the English language for hundreds and hundreds of years. So again, we see those structure class words not really changing while our form class words do. So the nightingale began the speech in one corner of one breach. I mean, that doesn't necessarily need a whole lot of translation for us. Um, and we can see here it was stiff and stark and strong. Again, now as we come into Middle English from Old English, we can see that a lot of our form class words are t starting to take shape as we recognize them. Some while soft and loud among. You know, we can see that, again, they're spelled differently because they're using a different phonological and a different writing system. So soft and lewd, soft and loud, um, you know, very close to what, what we use now. Uh, down here, of ether side of author's custe, so others either again those words that are those kind of structure words that are showing helping us to show relationships uh, kind of fully defined here 